What's up guys? In today's video, I wanted to discuss how image affects black female artists. Now, throughout the history of time, we've seen how black female artists either have to assimilate or go the extra mile just to make it big or get that huge success or to become mainstream, not to just become, you know, the average singer, might have a few hits, but to have a long lasting career. Black female artists always have to, in most cases, be extraordinary. One of the first examples that come to mind is Janet Jackson. Now we all know Janet Jackson came from the Jackson family dynasty, famous brothers, famous brother, Michael Jackson. And she set on this path, on this journey, on this career of her own. But as we've seen, as she set on her music career, she first started out with her first two albums with more passable pop songs that in most cases, if a white artist would have did with the right image, they would have became great successes. But for Janet Jackson, because it was a passable pop song, she had some hits, might have went top 40, but it wasn't enough to make her a huge success. It wasn't until Janet came out with a more carefree, luminescent attitude and danceability, showing her range, especially when it came to live performance and her style and her music videos, that she finally even got that mainstream success. Take it even a few steps further, she came out with Rhythm Nation, where she had the military style, she had the outfits, where it was really a movement. When she came out with that video and that album, that was a movement. Rhythm Nation, that's when Janet really, really blew up, really became a mainstream success, really started getting all these endorsement deals and brand deals and record deals and breaking records, number ones, number one album, number one single, top spitting music videos all over the radio, Janet Jackson had finally made it to the point where she was her brother's competition. It wasn't enough for her to do the passable pop songs that might have went top 40. She had to be extraordinary, come out with different outfits and a style and a movement that shook the world, that shook the industry. But then before Janet, let's take it back to Tina Turner, right? Tina Turner, she was first introduced with Ike and Tina. You know, the duo, she was the performer with her background dancers, Ike and his band we used to play behind them, and she was energetic, she was wild, she was fierce. She had the moves, she had the style, she had the rhythm, she had everything going on in her live performance. She was it, she was electric on stage. But transitioning into being a solo artist in the 80s, she was getting older, and let's not forget, she was a black female artist. And at the time, a lot of record labels and producers didn't really want to work with her because remember, this is the mid eighties. What kind of song, what kind of music would a middle aged black woman make that's going to be successful? Who wants to listen to a middle aged black female artist nowadays? That was the perspective at the time. And a lot of the European producers didn't really want to work with her. A lot of the big producers didn't really want to work with her. And she had a hard time finding her way. But then what happened? She had to assimilate and take a song, What's Love Got To Do With It? that she really didn't even like in the beginning. She did it in her own fierce way. She sung it in her own powerful way. And what happened? She blew up. She became a great success that she ever was with Ike. The top female artists for that time period. Top female tours. In a way, Tina Turner had to assimilate to that time that she had the big hair and the outfits. She still had that electric way of performing, but she had to change the type of music she wanted to sing and sing it in her own powerful way to really get that hit and that success. Around that same time, you have Whitney Houston who comes on the scene under Clive Davis and his label, Arista. She comes out beautiful. She can sing, she's powerful, she has a strong voice. She's the whole package. And her songs do very well. Saving All My Love For You, You Give Good Love. That was straight R&B straight R&B. But Whitney Houston didn't really blow up, blow up until what? She came out in 1987 with I Wanna Dance With Somebody, pop, you know. The R&B hits, the R&B songs were great, but it wasn't until she came out with a pop record that she really blew up and she became an international sensation. Because not only was she a black female artist with this powerful voice, but now she was a black female artist with this powerful voice that could somehow translate into a dance pop song that just crossed 
boundaries and oceans and continents. Now, because of the shift, Winnie did get backlash from the black community, getting booed on award shows and everything of the sort, but she still had that great success. Career-wise, it didn't matter how much the black community shunned her because why? She was mainstream. White America in that time had accepted her. She was international. She was going number one in many countries. Her album was number one in many countries. Her tours were selling out in many countries. It didn't matter that the black community was like, wait, this is the same girl who did Saving All My Love For You. Now she's doing, I wanna die. And what? they called being whitewashed but in that essence being whitewashed for that album for that song is what elevated her career along with her powerful singing voice then as time moved on you had beyonce who ever since destiny's child you saw that she was always in a way over the top she always had something to prove whether it was through her performance her vocals in the music videos, she was a standout. She was the lead. Not only did Beyonce have the look, she had the presence. She had the talent that as her career went on, eventually translated to her live performance in her music videos. Part of the reason why Beyonce is one of the top black female mainstream artists of today and why she still has a strong fan base that she does. Beyonce would not be this popular if she was just mediocre, if she would just did enough just to get by. In so many ways, the over the top singing, the over the top performing, that whole package that Beyonce trained and grew to be is what made her Beyonce. Because as time has proven, having the looks is just not enough. You have to be more than that. You have to do more than that. Having the looks might get you a hit here and there, but to have a long lasting career, you have to be extraordinary, especially as a black female artist. And now we see because Beyonce has established herself as an extraordinary artist with the way she sings and performs, she's able to divert from the over-sexualized image as her career progresses and do more female empowerment and feminism and black empowerment songs like Run the World or as of now, Brown Skin Girl in films like Black is King. Then along comes Rihanna, who started off as a beautiful young girl singing these nice R&B poppy songs with a Caribbean influence, which was great in the beginning of her career. But as time progressed, she knew, her record label knew, and everybody with her, they all knew that we gotta make a shift. Every artist has to evolve. If you want to have a long lasting career as an artist you have to evolve and image plays a huge part of that so what she came out with the happy go lucky caribbean girl with the nice songs that you love to hear on the radio that wasn't going to cut it anymore she had to come with an edge a dark edge as one of her next albums suggested good girl gone bad and she came out with umbrella and that's when rihanna blew up her career went into the stratosphere and that's why you see each album after that she had a reinvention where there was a new sound a new look, new hair, a new genre that she tried out with her music. Over the last few years, you saw that Rihanna always reinvented herself, always reinvented her sound to where if you really listen to it, her discography has almost every genre imaginable in it. See, that's what I see in Rihanna's case. Being the Caribbean girl with the Caribbean flavored songs, that wasn't going to be enough for a long lasting career. She always had to constantly reinvent herself, keep people interested in what she's going to do next, how she's going to look next, how's her next song's going to sound. So even with now, where Rihanna has basically done everything possible that we think she could do in the music industry, she's moved on. She's built an empire in makeup, and fashion, that people are still left wanting more. People still want to hear her next single. They still want to listen to her next album. They still anticipating her newest music that she has yet to release. Because with that, I always think about the careers of Aaliyah, Brandy, and Monica, where in each of their cases, they started off as young teenagers. But as their career progressed, as they got older, as they matured, you think about it, so did their fan bases. What worked in 1995 was not going to work in 2001. Image played a huge part in their career, from how they dress, their music videos, their style of singing, and it's what made them have these iconic careers, where they still have adoring fan bases, strong fan bases, years after. Even Aaliyah, 20 years after her passing, still has a strong fan base. Because you think about it, how would it have been if Aaliyah was 22, still singing songs like... How would it have been if Brandy was 25, still singing songs like... You my best friend. 
watching them grow up and evolve in their careers and their music choices and their music videos they had to show some growth some artistic development they couldn't just get by singing the same type of songs looking the same type of way they did when they first got introduced to us because in the case of like Adonna Summer, you see that if you don't assimilate with the times, if you don't move on with the newest trends in music, that although she was known as the queen of disco, although you could be seen as a groundbreaking artist, the leader of a certain genre of music, because in many ways, Donna Summer didn't assimilate with the times, her music didn't progress in a way that many other artists have. Today, her legacy and memory isn't as celebrated as it should be for all that she accomplished in the genre of disco and dance music. Although she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, her legacy and her music just isn't as appreciated as her peers. And it seems like it's because she was a black female artist at the time who because she didn't assimilate to the changing forms of music, her influence and impact got lost in translation in today's standard. So with all the different artists that I've already named, do you guys see a pattern? Because let me ask a question. Let me ask this question. If Britney Spears came out the way she did, with the song she did, with the music video she did, performing the way she did, and she was a black female artist, would she have been so successful? Would she have gone number one in every country? Would she have just become this biggest pop star sensation, winning awards, getting number ones, international pop star, the archetype of a pop star? Would she have achieved all of that? if she was a black female artist, then we can move on to Adele, who is seen as one of those artists nowadays that is automatic given that, oh, whatever song, no matter what type of song she's gonna make, it's gonna sell, it's gonna be a success. She's gonna win Grammys. She's gonna sell millions in the first week. It's gonna go number one. Her album's gonna go number one. It's like a given at this point. No matter how much her weight fluctuated, how much weight she lost, or how much she used to weigh, her style of singing and her voice, and just the simplicity, but the effectiveness of her artistry her voice alone was enough to just make her a huge success where you think of other artists black female artists whose weight may have fluctuated who don't even get one fourth of the success adele has or adele has gotten which brings me to an artist like jennifer hudson who like adele at one point was heavier but she always had that strong powerful voice but something about her music because she did R&B, it just wasn't enough for her to break out and become a big mainstream music artist. But Jennifer Hudson also proved that if used in the right way, her weight and voice can bring her success in many other ways. And speaking of weight, Missy Elliott, let's give Missy Elliott some shine. Not only was Missy Elliott a black female artist, she was a black female rapper who compared to the little kims and the foxy browns she was heavier than them and in some cases seen as not attractive as them so she couldn't rely on her looks to sell the music to sell the videos she had to rely on her talent and her creativity you see missy was proof that even if you didn't have that look that attracted a lot of attention to get people to buy your records to get the music videos spinning on tv that if you have that talent if you have the creativity people are going to be drawn to you you don't have to show off your body in a sense to make it big as a female rapper or as a female artist in general because when i think about it lizzo is one of those artists that although yes she's of a heavier size but she seems like the type that overcompensates because of her weight she knows that people might make fun of her for her weight so she overcompensates with the outfits and the antics and the twerking all the time and you know this carefree attitude which if broken down enough reveals insecurities but in that case it's just like her music her voice and her style was enough she's had great success over the last two three years she could play instruments she's a great live performer she's a great singer she makes that feel good music but because of her weight because of her image in many ways it's almost like she makes fun of herself before she gives the public a chance to and she puts on a front of it being carefree and body positivity because she knows how important image is in being a black female artist especially of a certain size while on the other hand we have a black female rapper like Megan Thee Stallion who has the body who has those curves who has that twerking ability to help her music sell to make people want to see her perform live because if you think about it if she wasn't twerking the way she do if she didn't move her body the way she did if she didn't rap the way she did do you think Megan Thee Stallion would be as popular and mainstream as she is now just think about it and as you think about that I want to get into one last artist of today's generation 
Chloe Bailey. Now, as most of us know, Chloe started on YouTube with her sister Hallie singing, doing covers, showing off their great voices. And Beyonce eventually picked them up and put them under her wing. And as Chloe and Hallie grew into their own, we saw their transformation as a duo. You know, with this ethereal music, showing off the operatic voices and their range, and showing off a different blend of R&B and pop that you don't see so often from black female artists. But the thing that gets me is, as we have seen Chloe go solo now, this seems to be a shift. And maybe it was always there and the fact that she was able to break away from her sister gave her this freedom and this sexual liberation to show off more and do more and express herself in a different way that she couldn't when she was in a duo. I know it's not just me because I've seen it many times. This new look and new style that you see in her live performances and in her music videos, it seems a bit forced. Like Chloe knows that in order to get attention, in order to get the most attention, you have to show off more. You have to perform in a different way. You have to dance in a different way. Not only can you not do a basic two-step, you gotta be extra in a similar way to how Beyonce used to perform, especially when she first came out. And that's why you see a lot of people comparing Chloe to a baby Beyonce, because Beyonce set that trend and she set that style of being extra on the stage, giving it your all. And being that Chloe is under Beyonce's wing, it seems that she did take a few notes from her book. And when you see her in every live performance, we see her in her music video, you do see glimpses of Beyonce because it seems like Chloe knows not singing a certain way or not dancing a certain way or not showing enough is not going to get her the success that she wants. And this is where we go back to the discussion of black female artists having to be extraordinary, having to do more to get more. You can't be mediocre. You can't just be basic. You can't just be on stage and be in your music videos with an oversized shirt like a Billie Eilish to get all the success and all these fans. You have to do more as a black female artist in this generation, or so they say. Since an artist like her seems to be one of the few exceptions to that rule where she never shows too much, and a part of her style and her artistry is the sunglasses and the big curly hair. But what's another thing I talk about? She's extraordinary in the sense that she knows how to play the instruments. She can't just be a basic R&B singer. She knows how to play instruments and she has the right producers and she connects with the right artists to help build her artistry, build her brand, build her fame, build her notoriety, build her success. She knows how to play the guitar. She knows how to play the piano, similar to the way Alicia Keys did when she first came out which helped to blow her career up back in 2001. So you see, I say this to say, black female artists have always had to be extraordinary in some type of way. So you see, I say this to say, black female artists have always had to be extraordinary in some type of way regarding image, talent, or creativity. They can't just slide by doing the basics that some of their white counterparts do. They have to do more on stage, they have to show more, sing harder, dance harder. Black female artists in some type of way always have to go above and beyond to even get one fourth the success that a Taylor Swift might get being basic compared to them. Some artists have it to where they're likable enough, they have the image, they have the songs that's passable enough to where they can sell a million copies in a week like a Taylor Swift. But for black female artists, they have to do more to get more. And in most cases, it's not even a smidge of what a Taylor Swift might achieve. So that was just my take on how image affects black female artists throughout the history of time. And that was just some examples. What examples do you guys have of how image has affected black female artists of the past and how it's affecting black female artists of the present? And how do you see image affecting the black female artists of the future? Please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.